guys, welcome or welcome back to Sissy Spaces. I hope you're enjoying your day today and I want to thank you for sharing a part of it with me. In today's video, we're doing lots of deep cleaning, a little bit of decluttering, and some organizing. I also want to share with you a grocery haul from Sam's, Walmart, Sally's, and PetSmart. And it wouldn't be a Sissy Spaces video without laundry motivation. So if you enjoy this type of content, continue watching. And if you're new to my channel, at the end of the video, please remember to hit that like, subscribe button, and share this channel with your family and friends. And if you've already subscribed, you know that hitting that like button, as well as watching the entire video, really supports my channel. Hubby's out of town at a bowling tournament today, so I figured it'd be a great time to deep clean the clutter and organize this office. I did promise that I wouldn't throw anything away, and I did keep my promise except for shredding some old mail. I did a complete overhaul of his desk drawers six months ago, so I was happy to see that he's maintained them. While decluttering and organizing his drawers, I'm also placing like items together and checking to see if there are any items that need to be restocked. Shredding is something the family and I do every day. We not only do it to prevent sensitive information from falling into the wrong hands, but also to reduce clutter. As I was shredding though, I noticed the shredder was running really slow and it's because it needs emptying. And Max loves to play with the shredded paper, so I need to move quickly so this job doesn't become a larger mess than it already is. <laughs> Max also likes to eat the shredded paper as he plays with it, so as I clean, I'm telling him no repeatedly, and it worked, because eventually he became bored and left. I asked my son to collect the rest of the trash out of the other room so he can combine it with this shredded paper. The additional trash covers the shredded paper, reducing the chance of anyone seeing the shredded paper and becoming curious as to what's on it. If you've been with my channel for a while, you know I love using the Pledge Wood Oil to clean and condition all my wood furniture, including any wood decor and art pieces. There are many different brands out there, so be careful when purchasing and read the labels carefully. I only use the Pledge Aftercare Wood Oil in the lemon or amber scent because it cleans well, adds shine, and doesn't leave a sticky residue. Monthly, I clean this office, and with that, I also deep clean Max's crate. I sanitize his crate covers, towels, and throws weekly and place them in the dryer on the antibacterial setting. To ensure full load, I also gather the rugs and wash them with his items. Max is a member of the family, so it's important to me to keep him just as healthy and safe as the rest of us. My son washed his uniform this morning and included a few of hubby's shirts, so I want to store them away before continuing in the office. After putting these away, I want to check the bookcase cabinets and the clutter and organize as needed. In my opinion, I believe I'm able to maintain a clean and tidy home because I assign a space for everything, and as things are moved from that space, I return it and inform the family to do the same. And I only purchase replacement items as needed. I've also learned the more I communicate with my family as to where things are placed, it's easier to keep a clean and clutter-free home. Cleaning Max's crate is a painstaking process that takes a lot of time, but he's worth it. I've tried spraying it down with a power washer and soap and leaving it outside to air dry, but Max barked the entire time until I brought it in and dried it by hand. So I now use Clorox wipes to wipe it down, hitting those spots which require a lot more attention. It's not my favorite way to clean it, but it works. I 
I removed everything off the bookcase today because I want to spend extra time cleaning it. Instead of using a cleaning product, I dipped a microfiber cloth in hot soapy water with Dawn dish detergent. These are not real wood shelves, so dish soap and water works just fine. I also flipped over the shelves that were slightly warped due to the weight of the items on it. This will prolong the life of the shelves and eliminate the cost of replacing them. I'm still shopping for an air purifier for my youngest son's room and would like to find something similar to this brand but much smaller. While removing the dust off the top of it, I noticed it was pretty dusty on the inside. So I'm going to use my vacuum to remove as much dust as possible. Hubby cleans his air purifier every 90 days with a product made by Auric called Air Purifier Cell Cleaning. So vacuuming is all I'm doing today. I will be decorating these shelves after cleaning them using most, if not all, of the decor I already have. I do plan to stop at Home Goods later to see if they have any new decor I can use as well. The moldings located at the very bottom of this bookcase are made of real wood, unlike the bookcase itself. I plan to repaint them sometime this year. In the meantime, I'll continue to clean them with a damp microfiber cloth. Because again, using a magic eraser on moldings too often will remove most of the paint, as it's done here. I was happy to see this cabinet was exactly the same as I organized it a month ago. So I only needed to wipe the shelves and clean a few spots off the inside of the door. After cleaning these shadow boxes, I want to use my Dyson vacuum to clean these floors. My youngest son is currently using the Swifter Dry Sweeping Mop in the family room, otherwise I would have used it instead. It's not only one of my favorite cleaning tools to use, but also a favorite amongst the other family members within our home. A lot of dust, dirt, and Max's hair gets trapped under this desk, so I use a Swifter duster first, then follow it up with a vacuum. I also need a better way to organize these cores because what I'm doing is not working. I'm going to spend a little more time than usual dusting and cleaning this printer. I'm noticing a lot of paper jams lately and I think it has to do with how I have it sitting on the cord. So not only will I clean the printer today, but also readjust the cord to prevent further paper jams. Not only am I vacuuming these floors today, but I also plan to mop them using the Swifter wet mop. But before mopping, I need to clean his leather chair deep clean the windows, as well as decorate these bookshelves. If you've been with my channel for a while, you know I like using the Wyman's Leather Wipes to clean and condition our leather furniture, coats, and shoes. It's recommended you clean your leather upholstery every two to four weeks, and I'm right on schedule by cleaning his leather office chair today. This chair is over 10 years old and it's holding up very well. My biggest fear is that the leather will crack over time, so I only use leather wipes to maintain it. It's time to decorate these shelves, but before I go to home goods, I'm going to replace the decor items that were originally on here. I'm also using a clean damp microfiber cloth to clean the decor before placing them back on the shelves. And some of these decor items were really dusty. As you can see, symmetry is very important to me, so I like to maintain a balance between each side of the bookshelf using like items. 
Also, I don't like spending a lot of money on decor. So some of these items that I use as decor are actually very practical day-to-day -day items like the frames, baskets, and cake risers. If you're new to my channel, the baskets on the ends are used to store our daily receipts. And at the end of the month, I total those receipts to see if we stayed on budget. And I'm happy to report for the month of March, we did just that. ago this bookshelf was full of nothing but books but over time I've convinced my husband to donate them. He's the real reader in our family and most of these books belong to him. I do have a few favorites but since starting this channel I don't read as much as I used to. I do enjoy creating these cleaning videos and don't have any plans to stop developing them anytime soon. ceramic cake risers I mentioned earlier, I only use them during the Christmas holidays. So before then, I place them on these bookshelves as decor and also store them here as well. I keep family and friends photos and memorabilia in this top basket and keep knickknacks from various trips in the other one. This large ceramic bowl is another item I use during the holidays and very similar to the cake risers, stored here and used as decor. I just heard the jingle on the LG washer, which means Max's items and the rugs are done and ready to go on the dryer. Although I or the boys shake Max's items well before placing them in the washer, there's always tons of dog hair left behind. Before finishing the office, I want to clean this washing machine well using a dry and damp paper towel. As you can see, Max's hair is everywhere and especially trapped in between the washing machine seal and drum. After removing as much hair as possible, I'm going to run a sanitized cycle without any laundry detergent, which kills any bacteria left behind. It's now time to tackle these windows, which starts our April cleaning schedule. A month ago, I mentioned that I would be purchasing a window seam cleaner, and I did, ordering it from Amazon. After using it, I returned it because it was heavier than expected and it didn't yield better results than a damp microfiber cloth. Along with a damp microfiber cloth, I'm also going to use a squeegee, but when we start cleaning the windows in the dining room, you'll see that I stopped using that squeegee as well. windows I'm using a microfiber cloth dipped in warm soapy water, a squeegee, and a small scrub brush that I also purchased from Amazon. And to remove all the debris from the window casings, I'm using my Dyson V15 handheld vacuum. I started the process of cleaning these windows by wiping the entire window down, then using a squeegee to remove any excess water. I then turned the window locks at the top of the sash inward, carefully pulling the sash towards me in order to clean the other side of the window. I kept the sash at an angle to avoid it from coming out of the chute. To close it, I tilted the sash back in so it returns to a closed position while pushing the locking latches back in to secure the window. In order to clean the window casings, I open the window at a height to allow easy access to the casings. I then use a scrub brush to loosen the dirt, which allowed the vacuum to easily remove it. Once all the dirt was removed, I used the same microfiber cloth to wipe it clean. And although not shown here, I did rinse my microfiber cloth in between cleaning each window in order to remove any excess dirt.
This was a long and tiring process, but I pressed on knowing I only need to do this once per year. Also, I thrive on natural light, and by cleaning these windows, it allows more natural light to come in, thus brightening up the space. I'm using the same microfiber cloth I used to clean the windows on this chair mat in order to remove some sticky residue I noticed earlier. From here, we'll replace the rugs by the doors, as well as the towels and throw in Max's crate. These are microfiber dog mats from the My Doggy Place store. I ordered them off Amazon three years ago, and with regular washing and drying, they've held up very well. I like placing one of Max's bath towels over the plastic pan of his crate for comfort. And when we brought him home at six weeks old, he immediately became attached to this throw. So I also keep it in his crate as it is his security blanket. After hanging this towel, we'll fold this crate cover and store it away. From there, we'll deep clean the dryer, removing as much dog hair as possible from the lint trap, dryer lint filter, and tub. These dryer lint filters take time to clean, but it's important that you do so because they are the first part of the dryer's exhaust system. Without them, lint will build up around the dryer's internal heating element, causing major damage to the dryer and potentially start a fire. After replacing the filter, we also need to vacuum the floors, and once done, we're going to empty and clean the vacuum. I also need to mop these floors, but I still need to deep clean the remaining room, as well as purchase groceries. So hopefully we'll have time to get this done today. After cleaning this vacuum, I want to make a few adjustments to the bookcase. Two of the shelves look bare due to the lack of decor, so I want to adjust it to make it look fuller. After that, the office is done and we can begin cleaning the next room. Before deep cleaning the next room, I decided to take a quick break. I also noticed as I was taking my break, Max was doing the same. As you can see, we're now in the dining room. I want to remove everything first so I can focus on deep cleaning one thing at a time. I found I do a better job of deep cleaning if I remove some of the larger items first. Also, instead of cleaning the windows last, like I did in the office, I'm starting with them first because it's such a large job and if I put it off, it will not get done. I'm using the same products and tools on the dining room windows that I used in the office, except the squeegee of course. My old school window cleaning skills kicked in and I found it quicker to ditch the squeegee and dry them with a microfiber cloth by hand. I know the purpose of the squeegee is to remove any excess water, but the water dried on the windows faster than I could remove it. And after drying them by hand, surprisingly, there wasn't any streaks. I forgot to mention this earlier, but I did dust the blinds in the office before cleaning the windows. And very similar to the office, I'm wiping the windows down first, then drying them using a dry microfiber cloth instead of a squeegee. 
After that, to clean the back side of the window, I turned the window locks at the top of the sash inward, pulling the sash towards me. As I clean, I'm keeping the sash at an angle to avoid it from coming out of the shoe. Once clean, I tilt the sash back so it returns to a locked position. And from there, I vacuumed and cleaned inside the window frame and casing. As I was cleaning these windows, I decided it would probably be quicker if I opened all the windows and cleaned all the window casings at the same time. But before I do that, I need to go and get the scraper and vacuum first. I have a habit of returning things to their designated space after using them, and this is one way I keep my house uncluttered and organized. But sometimes I get ahead of myself, like today. By the way, this green scrap brush was actually made to clean grout lines, but I like using them to loosen up the dirt inside the window casings. They have this narrow tip that fits in the corners of the window casings, allowing for easier use. Of course, it doesn't reach and loosen up all the dirt, but that's why I'm pairing it with the vacuum. After cleaning the bristles of the brush and leaving it out to air dry, I vacuumed and cleaned the remaining window casings with the goal of cleaning the chandelier next. Once I was done cleaning these windows, I was so proud of myself because while I was eating, I had to give myself a pep talk to continue. Don't get me wrong, I love cleaning, but after cleaning three large windows, the thought of cleaning one larger window was very unpleasant. In my opinion, it's similar to receiving a vaccination. The first vaccination is painful, but the thought of receiving another one right after the first is downright brutal. dining room table is a dumping ground for packages and mail so after a month of this it gets pretty dirty and today was no exception. After dusting it with a swifter duster I'm going to clean it using a clean dry microfiber cloth and the Pledge Aftercare wood oil. Although not shown here I do clean the sides and legs of the table as well. I mistakenly broke the lash six months ago, which holds the extension of the table in place. So I know they are clean between the lines of the extension and the table itself. We don't plan to remove the extension anytime soon. So not cleaning between the lines is working just fine. As you can see, I'm using the same microfiber cloth I used to clean the table to clean the wooden frame of this wall art. This is just one way I extend the life of my cleaning products. I'm also using the iRobot vacuum so I can use my Dyson vacuum on these chairs, which brings me one step closer to finishing deep cleaning this dining room. While vacuuming these chairs, I was watching the time. I still needed to mop the floors in the office and foyer, as well as here in the dining room. I also want to purchase groceries and cook dinner before it gets too late in the evening. Another item on my list of things to do today was cleaning the window in the foyer. The ceilings in the foyer are over 18 feet high, so today I'll dust and have one of the boys clean the window later this week. I also want to clean the iRobot before heading out to purchase groceries. I make 
at a point to clean the iRobot after each use. The canisters are not very large, so they fill up fast. It is recommended you clean the iRobot after each use, but the manual also states that you may need to clean it more often if you have larger rooms, children, and pets. And as you can see, daily cleaning is not difficult at all. Just empty the canister, wipe clean, and you're done. As I mentioned earlier, the ceilings in this foyer are over 18 feet in height, and I promised myself not to climb on anything over three feet. So today, we're dusting only, and we'll let the boys deep clean the window later. these floors in the foyer will do the same in the office. Then head out to PetSmart, HomeGoods, Walmart, and Sam's. I also need to stop at the gas pump at Sam's to fill up because tomorrow I plan to drive to my sister's house, which is over an hour away, to visit mom. Our floors are done and we can now throw on some shoes and head out. Max has one can of dog food left, so my first stop is at PetSmart. The Hill Science Diet, Sensitive Stomach and Skin, Chicken Flavored Soft Dog Food sells out quickly, so I was happy to see nine cans left. After purchasing those, as well as three other flavors, I headed to Home Goods, Sam's, Walmart, and Sally's. We're back and I'm happy to say I only purchased what was on the list. Unfortunately, I didn't see anything I liked at Home Goods, so the bookcase will remain the same. After unbagging everything, we'll do a quick grocery haul, starting with the cold items first, so I can refrigerate them because it has been at least an hour since I purchased them. I still save all of my grocery store bags, placing them in these used tissue boxes. Not only does this save me money, but it's also a great way to recycle these bags. These are the Santa Fe salads from Sam's, as well as the beef hot dogs and fresh squeezed orange juice. And from Walmart, my family really liked these Bubba Burgers and crinkle cut fries. After putting these away, we'll continue with the rest of the grocery haul. these Bubba Burgers in the freezer, I'm going to cut the bag of crinkle cut fries in half and place them in the Ziploc gallon freezer bags. By doing this, it prevents freezer burn as well as crumbs from ending up at the bottom of my freezer. My youngest son loves Sprite, so that's for him and the hair moisturizer and body wash is for me. I also needed more command strips, lip balm, Glade plug-in refills, and Dunkin' Donut coffee. These coffee pod organizers hold up to 90 pods, so I always purchase a 72 pack of Dunkin' Donut coffee pots from Sam's to refill this coffee drawer. After restocking the command strips, we're going to take my hair moisturizer and body wash to my bedroom and restock the Glade plug-ins in both of the owner's suite linen closets. We didn't need another Glade plug-in, but Sam's only had the 9-pack refills with the additional Glade plug-in. So I figured I'll store it away, and if one needs replacing, I'll have this extra one on hand to do just that. These 
display plugins are a better deal at Sam's than Walmart. For example, if you purchase the five pack at Walmart, it would cost you $11.98 versus the nine pack at Sam's with the additional Glade plugin for $15.72. Or at least that's what the price was when I purchased it at Sam's last week. After restocking these Glade plugins, we'll tidy the closet and then continue on with our grocery haul. We were low on the Nature's Own Honey Wheat Bread and my favorite Cheetos and Smart Food Popcorn. Lately, I've had a taste for chocolates and nuts, so I've been purchasing these chocolate-covered almonds, and they are so good. And of course, you already know I needed to restock Max's soft canned food. As soon as I opened Max's door, he came running. Most of the time, he thinks it's snack time whenever I open the door, but since it's close to dinner time, snacking is off the table. He eats dinner every day between 5 to 6 p.m., so he's going to have to wait until everything's put away, and then I'll feed him. Believe me when I say Max has never missed a meal. this entire container of chocolate almonds in one sitting, I always place a cup of nuts in these Ziploc snack bags. I eat whatever I want when I want, but I also believe in portion control, and I never overindulge on sweets. By the way, two of these containers will net about 18 snack bags at one cup each. For in the video, I want to thank you for watching Sissy Spaces. And if you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like, subscribe button, and share this channel with your family and friends. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.